Hello good people and welcome back into another Parry This History video. Today we are going to be learning about Benjamin Brown as a part of our American Heroes series here on YouTube. This man was a sergeant in the US Army who fought during the Indian Wars and due to his valor was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. I would be willing to bet that you have never heard of him, so buckle in and sit back while I tell you everything there is to know about this historical figure. Now let's dive on in and explore the life of Benjamin Brown. Benjamin Brown was what was known as a Buffalo Soldier. Given that this term has hasn't been used much since the United States military became fully integrated in the 1950s, uh, so you're likely not aware of the historical significance of the term Buffalo Soldier. So let's just break it down. Buffalo Soldier was a nickname given to the all-black units in the United States Army after the Civil War, and leading all the way up through the Korean police action. However, the nickname did not actually originate with the original all-black units that were founded during the Civil War. In fact, there are recorded instances of black Americans fighting in armed conflicts all the way back to colonial America. However, the term Buffalo Soldier originated in the Western Indian Wars and actually originates with the Cheyenne Indians, who referred to the all-black units as Wild Buffalo. This description is allegedly derived out of a respect for their fierce fighting abilities, and it didn't take long for their fellow white soldiers to alter the nickname to the term Buffalo Soldiers, which the all-black units would adopt and wear as a badge of honor for years to come. Despite the fact that during the American Civil War, several all-black regiments were raised and served alongside the rest of the Union, Army, the official all-black army units weren't established until 1866 as the first peacetime all-black regiments. This was a congressional act which created six all-black army units. These units were the 9th and 10th Cavalry and the 38th, 39th, 40th, and 41st Infantry Regiments. The four infantry regiments would later be reorganized into the 24th and 25th Infantry Regiments. This happened when the entire U.S. Army was being reorganized and happened when a change effectively doubled the size of an infantry regiment. The first of these all-black regiments to be formed was the 10th Cavalry, which was formed at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas on September 21st, 1866. This is the regiment that would actually fight so ferociously against the Cheyenne that they would earn the nickname of Buffalo Soldiers, which would then become the generic term for all of the all-black regiments. When the westward movement began, the U.S. Army was largely assigned to assisting in this westward expansion. Many regiments, including the Buffalo Soldiers, would see this through by escorting settlers, protecting railroad crews, building forts and roads, and escorting U.S. mail. For the Buffalo Soldiers in particular, most of these assignments would go to the infantry regiments. However, the 9th and 10th Cavalry regiments would conduct campaigns against various Indian tribes along the western frontier all the way from Montana to Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. Throughout the Western Indian Wars, approximately 20% of U.S. Cavalry troopers were black, and the all-black units would fight in over 177 engagements. And in these military campaigns, the all-black units would distinguish themselves greatly. During the Indian Wars, these units would have 13 enlisted men and 6 officers who would earn the Medal of Honor for Valor. After the Indian Wars ended in the 1890s, these all-black regiments would continue to serve and would fight in the Spanish-American War. In this conflict, a further 5 more Medals of Honor would be earned by soldiers in these regiments. In 1899, many of these decorated soldiers would leave the army and would become some of the first African-American National Park Rangers in various national parks in California. These parks include Sierra Nevada at Yosemite National National Park, Sequoia National Park, and General Grant National Park. The Buffalo Soldier Regiments would go on to participate and serve with valor and distinction in many other military campaigns, including the Philippine Insurrection, the Mexican Expedition, World War I, World War II, and the Korean Police Action. In 1948, President Truman would desegregate the U.S. military and these all-black units would be integrated into the U.S. Army. However, the term Buffalo Soldier would remain a badge of honor for previous members of these all-black regiments for many years. The oldest living Buffalo Soldier Mark Matthews would die on September 6, 2005 at the ripe old age of 111. So now that we have briefly summarized the distinguished and storied history of the Buffalo Soldiers, let's turn our attention back to the man himself, Benjamin Brown. He was born in the Livingston District of Spotsylvania County, Virginia in 1859. His parents were Henry and Polly Brown. In 1877, he would leave Virginia seeking a better life than work on a plantation, and would move to Pennsylvania where he would join the U.S. Army. He would be assigned to to the 24th Colored Infantry, Company C. At this time, he was 18 years old, 5 foot 9 inches, and likely physically strong from a childhood of manual labor working with his parents. His first enlistment would end eight years later in 1885. We know little of his first enlistment other than the fact that he ended it as a corporal, and on his service record, he received an excellent rating. However, his military career would not end here, and he would accept a second enlistment at the age of 26 on March 23, 1885, and he would serve at Fort Grant, Arizona. This marked 
marks the beginning of Benjamin Brown's life as a professional soldier. Fort Grant was a strategic point in defending settlers from attacks by the formidable Apache Nation. While serving at Fort Grant, Benjamin Brown would be promoted to sergeant and would participate in the Apache War. In addition to fighting Indians, Brown had significant administrative responsibilities as a non-commissioned officer. His tasks would include guarding the fort, training new recruits as well as physical conditioning, and leading patrols to protect the local byways against Apache incursion and local bandits. Clearly, Brown would serve well and with distinction, as his record of enlistment would also reflect an excellent rating. On May 11, 1889, Sergeant Brown would lead a detachment of 12 soldiers from Fort Grant to accompany U.S. Army Paymaster Major Joseph W. Wom. Major Wom was transporting the Western Army payroll, and Brown's men were assigned to escort the payroll from Fort Grant to Fort Thomas in order for Major Wom to administer the payroll there. If all would go according to plan, they would arrive safely at Fort Thomas, and Brown and his men would then return to Fort Grant, with Major Wom receiving a new escort from Fort Thomas for the next leg of his journey. However, things would not go according to plan. The payroll caravan consisted of two covered wagons carrying over $28,000 in mostly gold coins. Along with Major Wom are Brown and his men, as well as two green privates driving the wagons, Wom's clerk, William Gibbon, and a woman named Frankie Campbell, who was riding along with them to Fort Thomas, where her husband was imprisoned for allegedly killing a fellow soldier. She was on her way there to collect gambling debts on behalf of her husband from the soldiers at Fort Thomas as soon as they were paid. The payroll caravan would ride on for some time before coming to a narrow defile known as Bloody Run. The spot was named this after an Apache attack seven years earlier. It was a narrow ravine surrounded by decently steep rocky slopes. This of course made it a great spot for an ambush. As the caravan moved through the defile, they stopped for a boulder in the road. When they stopped, William Gibbon and a few other men leave their wagons to investigate. As they approach the rock, one of the men remarks, that rock was rolled there by hand. And as Gibbon reached down to remove a smaller rock from the path, the ambush would begin. An outlaw would reveal himself from behind a rock and yell, look out you black sons of bitches, and fire his pistol, a signal which would unleash a volley of fire from all around the ridge. The initial volley of fire would kill one of the mules on the front wagon, preventing it from moving. It would also inflict several initial casualties, including one Private Lewis, who took a bullet in the gut, Squire Williams, an infantryman from the 24th Regiment who was hit in the ankle, and of course Sergeant Brown himself, who was struck in both the abdomen and one of his arms. The mule pulling the second wagon would panic and crash the second wagon into the rocks off the side of the path. The soldiers would rush to get their rifles, which were stored in the wagon, and would begin the defense. The soldiers were well trained and experienced, but their position was terrible. They were outnumbered and effectively locked in a kill zone with no way forward, as their attackers maintained the high ground all around them and were mostly hidden in the rocks. Major Wom directs the men to find cover and return fire. The bulk of the men find cover behind a small ledge, with some of them using the wagons for cover. The fighting would go on for nearly two hours before Major Wom would order the retreat, and the men would retreat down a ravine draining into the nearby Cottonwood Marsh, about 300 yards from the wagons. During the fighting, Benjamin Brown would continue to fight, not stopping despite his two wounds, until he was struck a third time in his other arm. He would then assist Major Wom in the retreat to Cottonwood Marsh, where they would regroup and take cover, finally out of the line of fire. With wounded soldiers all around him, Major Wom gives up the payroll, and eyewitness reports attest that 12 to 15 men descended from the cliffs, broke into the army strong boxes, and made off with all of the money. The ambush would be revealed to have been perpetrated by a gang of Mormons from a nearby settlement. Despite the fact that nine of the men who were involved in the attack would be identified and arrested, none of them would be convicted of the crime, thanks to a team of expensive lawyers. The money would never be recovered. Paymaster Major Wom would testify to the U.S. House of Representatives Committee on Military Affairs regarding the incident. The committee would conclude that the soldiers displayed unusual courage and skill in defense of the government's property. The highest praise would go to Sergeant Benjamin Brown for his gunfighting and refusal to stop fighting despite the wounds he received, and to another soldier, Isaiah Mays, who allegedly crawled two miles to the nearest home for assistance after the ambush. On February 19, 1890, both Brown and Mays would be presented with the Congressional Medal of Honor by President Benjamin Harrison. The Medal of Honor, of course, being the highest award for valor in action against an enemy force which can be bestowed upon an individual serving in the armed services of the United States. Mays would leave the army after this event, but Benjamin Brown would not. He would re-enlist for a five-year tour at Fort Grant, Arizona. At the end of this enlistment, he would be discharged on March 21st, 
1895 at the nearby fort Huachuca, Arizona. This enlistment would be marked by the fact that he was still recovering from his wounds that he had received during the Wam payroll robbery. Even though he was still recuperating from these wounds and still had one of the bullets inside him, he ended the tour with his worst rating on record, receiving a very good evaluation. He would then re-enlist at Fort Douglas in Utah for another three years. During this enlistment, he would receive his final promotion to the rank of Sergeant Major. This enlistment would end in March of 1898, and his record would once again reflect an excellent rating on his service evaluation. Sergeant Major Benjamin Brown would then serve a tour of duty in San Nicolas in the Philippines during the Philippine insurrection. He would serve here with distinction. His next enlistment would be at Fort Assiniboine in Montana. He would re-enlist here for the seventh time in 1904. Brown was an expert rifleman and was ranked 54th in the entire U.S. Army in 1904. However, in 1905, at the age of 43, he would fall ill and be discharged from the Army for good on June 3rd of 1905. He would then be transported to the General Hospital in Washington, D.C. He had suffered a debilitating stroke, likely caused from the bullet that remained in his body since the 1889 gunfight, where he had earned his Medal of Honor. After his hospitalization, he would be moved to the nearby U.S. Soldiers Home in Washington, D.C. He would live here until his death on September 5, 1910. He never married and has no reported children. He is buried in the first ever National Cemetery, that being the United States Soldiers and Airmen's Home National Cemetery in Washington, D.C.